I'm gonna teach you how to master your Rocket League movement. From awkward, slow recoveries to crisp, smooth, how did you get there so fast recoveries. Today, we're covering it all. Now we're gonna go right in, but warning, this list is in increasing difficulty order. What that means is if you're new to the game watching this, so let's say you're gold, plat, or even diamond watching right now, I suggest you start near the start of this video. Try not to skip too much. But if you're one of my more advanced viewers, so say you're already champ one, champ two, you're welcome to use the timestamps below to skip ahead to some of the more advanced moves near the end of the video. Rocket League movement number one, the flip cancel. Flip cancels are, in my opinion, the most fundamental Rocket League move you could learn and one that you need to learn as soon as possible once you finish the Rocket League tutorial. Yeah, flip cancels by themselves might not be flashy, but mastering flip cancels will translate and make you learn half flips faster, speed flips faster, and overall recoveries faster. Now, in terms of the how to flip cancel, I could teach you in this video, but I think it would be funnier for you to just go watch my flip cancel tutorial that I made uh, back in high school. Spoiler, I thought I was the shit at the time, and looking back, I wasn't. My personality back then hasn't aged well, but the actual Rocket League knowledge is still pretty sound. So rather than listen to me at 21 explain it to you, go listen to me at 17 talk about flip cancels. My voice is higher pitched and I sound funny. So overall, your life would be better if you just go watch that. But one thing I will say here, one thing you should absolutely know about flip cancels and the way flip canceling works for whatever reason in Rocket League is you can flip cancel any direction you want except sideways. The Rocket League developers, I don't know why they made it like this. They made it so that you can flip cancel a front flip so you can stop a front flip wherever you want in the flip. You can do the same thing for a back flip, same thing for diagonal flips, which is actually how you half flip and how you speed flip. We'll cover that in a second. But you need to know you can't flip cancel a barrel roll. Once a barrel roll left or right starts, it can't be stopped unless you hit a surface, aka wave dashing. This feature of flip cancels where you know you can cancel whenever you want in whatever direction you want is super useful when you're playing in tight quarters. So think goal line defense, think corners, that sort of thing, where you're close between the lip of the ceiling and the wall, that's where flip cancels become especially useful to accelerate your recoveries. So just remember, you can flip cancel any direction, just not sideways. Point is, flip cancel is foundational to good half flips, speed flips, recoveries overall. You need to learn it first. Number two, wave dashes. There's no such thing as free speed in Rocket League, except for in the case of a wave dash. A lot of new players like to skip over this and think, oh yeah, 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 I can wave dash. You know, I did it once. It's not that important, right? Wrong. Wave dashing is literally glitching the map to reset your car and get a speed boost faster than you otherwise could, even with a speed flip. So wave dashes are non-negotiable. Number two, they need to be a 100% of the time thing. And I'm going to tell you how to do it in a second, but I also want to teach you guys something about mechanics in Rocket League that I think 90% of players get wrong, or at least in my opinion. The goal with learning any mechanic, wave dashes and recoveries are especially true for this. The goal is not to learn the mechanic so that you can do it 100% of the time. A lot of people are surprised when I say that. The real goal you should have when learning a mechanic is be able to do it 100% of the time without thinking about it. And there's a big difference. One thing is conscious competence. I'm going to try not to use big words just to sound smart here, but the one is knowing how to do it when you're focused, right? Knowing how to wave dash when you're in free play, when you're focused, but that's not good enough. What really matters is being able to wave dash in game while you're not thinking about it, while all you're focused on is how do I get from point A on this wall to let's say point B, my back post. This might sound obvious and like I'm wasting your time here, but I actually want you to give some thought to how this applies to other mechanics. So for example, air dribbles. When I'm coaching players, a lot of them will tell me, hey Luke, I know how to air dribble. I can hit it all the time in free play, but when I get in game, I can't do it. I don't know why I'm perfect in free play, but I choke in game. And there are two reasons for this. One is boost, which maybe I'll talk about later. Maybe I'll forget about by the time we get there. But 
Two, more importantly, the point of the air dribble is to learn how to dribble the ball over your opponent's head. So you need to be able to air dribble while watching a defender. Otherwise, you're going to choke when you have to take your eyes off the ball and focus on the guy who's trying to save the shot. Point is, we want to train mechanics to the point where they become automatic, not just I can do it if I try really, really hard and focus on it, right? Because that's like going to the dentist and saying, I brush my teeth every day. And you brush your teeth every day for the two days following the days that you go to the dentist. But then after like two or three or four or five days, you're brushing your teeth like once a night, definitely not flossing. And it's like, what good is that? It doesn't matter if you can do it when you're reminded, it has to be automatic. Was that a good analogy? That was not a good analogy. Oh, well, what were we talking about? Ah, yes, the how. I'm going to teach you how to wave dash because it's super quick here. And I think it's important to learn the key to a quick wave dash is simply bracing opposite the direction you want to dash. So if you want a speed boost forwards, you know, you're dismounting a wall and you want to accelerate your recovery forward, you simply jump off the wall, flatten your car, and then you brace back. So opposite the direction you're about to dodge before you flip. So it's simply flatten car, brace back, and then dodge forward. Same thing if you want to wave dash left or right. If you want to speed boost left, for example, you simply air roll right, then dodge left to slap your wheels down and recover that way, or vice versa, air roll left, and then dodge to the right to wave dash right and recover that way. Pro tip, you can do this in any direction, but if you're not doing this perfectly forward or backwards, you want to hold power slide while you do it. And we'll talk more about that later. Number three, half flips an absolutely essential move. These first three moves are essential. The ones coming up are just going to be more advanced, but the half flip is essential because it is the fastest way to turn your car around in Rocket League. Period, point blank, there's no faster way to turn than half flip. So if you're new, you need to learn this first. Now, a perfect half flip, learning how to do a perfect 180 degree half flip will cover your bases 90% of the time in ranked. So when I say perfect half flip, by the way, this is 180 degrees straight back, turn your car around, right? Flip directions. That's what a perfect half flip is. It's useful. It'll get you 90% of the results from using half flips. However, anything less than a perfect half flip, anything less than 180 degrees will come up about 10% of the time in your ranked games. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you imagine a clock and you know you initially dodge six and then cancel 12, that's a perfect half flip. But if you dodge slightly off center, if your initial dodge is like down left or down right, right? If your initial dodge is even just slightly off center to let's say five o'clock, four o'clock, or even three o'clock, so almost like perfectly sideways, your car will turn around, but it will end facing more to the right or vice versa, more to the left if your initial dodge is to the left. Point is, anything that's not true north will start to approach what's called a quarter flip. Now, these might not seem super useful and they're not at the low ranks, but at the high ranks, once again, in close quarters, quarter flips can save your game. Example use case for this is let's say you're backed up against your back wall and let's say you want to turn around, but then you want to drive out into your corner to the right. So your front post on the right side of your net and you're about to backflip into your back wall and you need to go challenge in the corner. Well, if you just do a perfect half flip, you'll end facing at your wall, but your car's going to be driving straight up the wall and you'll have to turn down before you go make the challenge. Instead, what's more efficient is in this case, if you dodge down to about four o'clock, you flip to four, let's say, and only then cancel up, then boom, you're on your back wall, but you're also facing out to the right so you can go drive into your corner immediately and contest and challenge the ball. This is just one application for half flips and quarter flips. I'll have more on them in the video here. Click that if that super fast explanation didn't stick and we're going to keep moving. Number four, speed flips. Now this is right on the border of the essential moves, but it is in my opinion, still an essential you will need once you're in grand champ and a very, very nice to have mechanic if you're champ or diamond. Below diamond, don't worry about the speed flip. Honestly, most of the stuff in this list, don't worry about if you're like gold or plat. But if you want to keep watching diamond and above is when I would start training this speed flip. 
Why is it an essential move? Point blank, it's the fastest way to gain speed in Rocket League. Not only is it the fastest way to move around the field, but it's also the most boost efficient. Because if you didn't know, a speed flip keeps your nose facing forward throughout the duration of the flip. So unlike a front flip, for example, where half the time you're facing forward, but the second half of the flip, your nose is facing you know, backwards, a speed flip will always keep your nose pointed ahead. This is key because it allows you to boost throughout the flip. You know, if you're somebody who holds down boost throughout your entire front flip, well, I hate to be that guy, but you are literally just burning boost. Half that boost is pushing you forward, and then the other half is pushing you straight back from where you came. So there goes 30 boost for nothing. Gold players, please stop doing this. The how of the speed flip is a bit more technical than the half flip. It's just, it's not more technical. It's, it's just a diagonal flip cancel, but the timing is more precise. So to avoid, you know, me explaining it and then you potentially clicking on this video. I'm going to skip over it because I need you to stay on this video and I need to maximize watch time. I don't know if you know this, but the longer you watch a YouTube video, the more money I make. Pretty cool, right? And real talk, I don't know if you know this, but the YouTube channel actually runs a loss. And between all the editors, the artists, the thumbnail designers, and everything else, we're negative on the YouTube channel, right? It's it, it, it costs money. In reality, the only reason that this channel stays alive and I can afford to pay Buck the video guy a livable wage for these videos is thanks to the sponsors we have on this channel, like the Grand Champ Bootcamp. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the Grand Champ Bootcamp is the most comprehensive coaching program in Rocket League designed to take gold through champ ranked players, maybe like you watching, up to Grand Champ in just 90 days or less. New students who enroll will take a benchmark test to evaluate their skills and will be assigned a private coach based on their results for a fully personalized 12 week coaching experience. Not only that, but the minute you enroll, you'll be introduced to a network of over 3000 players who've joined the program since inception that you'll be able to train and rank up alongside with. So if you're hard stuck and you're sick of me and my nonsense rambling in these YouTube videos, DM the Grand Champ Bootcamp account over on Discord with the keyword Luke to learn more about enrolling. I'll have my Discord with the Grand Champ Bootcamp account first link down in the description below. So go click that, send them the word Luke so that they know you came from this video. Otherwise, <laughs> back to the video. Moving on to move number five, power slide. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna tell you how to power slide in a second, but just to confirm before you move forward in this video, if you just finished watching the speed flip section and you don't know how to speed flip, right? You're not at a rank where you need to speed flip. Let's say you're plattered, you know, you're getting through a diamond and you're okay without it. That's fine, but just make sure that on any of these recovery mechanics coming up, if you're not speed flipping, you at least need to diagonal flip. Right, if you can't speed flip, a diagonal flip is the second best option because of the way that you know your nose stays facing forward and boost efficiency and all that. But point is, if you don't have speed flip, diagonal flip, please don't front flip around the field. Cool? Cool. Number five, power slide. Put simply, holding power slide preserves your speed. It saves your speed. Now, if you don't know this, you should be holding power slide 99% of the time you're landing or moving from any wall to another wall in Rocket League. And the reason being is because let's say you jump and you're landing on the ground. If your wheels are not faced perfectly straight ahead, if they are not perfectly in line with your velocity vectors or whatever the physics term is, you will lose speed and your car will come to a screeching halt. But if you simply click this one button called power slide while you land, your car will glide along the ground like you're on an ice rink. And this can buy you time to straighten out your car and make your movement smooth. Now, I want to give a shout out to the tutorial maker Thanovic for this one because he made a video called The Ultimate Recovery Guide. He talks about holding power slide. And of all the guides I've seen, the way he explains it and the way he shows it in his is honestly my favorite. So if you want to learn how to actually do this and how to be super crisp with power slide, go watch Thanovic's video. He explains it well and he explains how you can add half flips to it and wave dashes to, to make it nice. But for here, for starters, if I'm just giving you the too long, don't care, Luke, what's the bottom line? The bottom line 
is you need to hold power slide more than you're holding it now, but for less long. So I'm gonna go on a tangent, but there's this really cool graph, actually, in all seriousness, this is not a stupid story. Although I have more coming up, so stay tuned. There's this really cool graph that came out like two years ago that um, my buddy Waiton Pilkin put out, or at least he popularized it, where it showed a linear relationship. So rank on the x-axis here, time power sliding in game. What they found was that as you go up the ranks, players just power slide more. Like it's literally just, you know, the average is, you know, 15 seconds at gold, but at grand champ, it's 35 seconds or you know, something. The more you power slide, the more you will rank up. No, that's not actually the conclusion. The conclusion was the more you power slide, the more you'll rank up as long as your power slide durations are small. So what they found is that you should be power sliding a lot, like you should be clicking the button tons, but the duration, the length, the amount of time you hold the button should not be long. So you should press it often, but it should just be a click right? To recover and then straighten out. Recover, straighten out. You do not need to hold power side. This is where people will start to spin out if you've ever seen it. And at that point, it'll start to kill your recoveries, not save them. All right. Number six, wall dashing. Wall dashing might not be useful, but it looks sick, right? We can all agree. It looks sick. So even me, the fearless leader that I am, I even caved and spent like a couple hours in free play learning the wall dash when it came out. Has it helped me in ranked? No. Will I ever get those four or five or six hours of my life that I spent learning the wall dash back? Also no. But after I score goals, do the people in Twitch chat think I look cool? You bet they do. If you want to learn how to do this move, from my experience, the movement is basically a sideways flip cancel. Now I know you can't flip cancel sideways and that's true, but if you try to flip cancel sideways, once again, for whatever reason, I didn't make this game, I just coach it, you will like dash up the wall and move really fast. For example, if the wall is to your right and you wanna wall dash right, you wanna quickly push your joystick to the left here and then flick it to the right and mash your jump button. So, you know, slow, controlled, flick to the left and then mash the controller, right? That's what we're doing. Vice versa, same thing goes on the left wall. And the secret there is that brace direction. You know, how, like I told you when you wave dash, you need to brace back to, to wave dash forward. When you're wall dashing, when you brace left to wall dash right, while you do that brace, you want that brace to be very small. So you don't want to push your joystick all the way to the left. You don't want to hear that, that click noise. You just want to do a soft push to the left and then start spazzing out on the controller, you know, hands shaking. That's what you do. And for whatever reason, that's how you can chain wall dashes together. Now, the timing and the consistency of this will vary based on how high you're doing it on the wall, uh, what part of the curve you're on, even like how tilted your car is on the wall. So just experiment, but wall dashing, the more you know, now you know. Number seven, more useful than wall dashing. I only put it number seven on this list because I didn't think about it before wall dashing, shame on me, is the curve dash. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the curve dash is a way to prepare for your wave dash early off of a wall. So if you're dismounting a wall, right? Let's say you're coming off the sidewall, you're driving down. If you're super close to the ground and you don't have time to jump off and wave dash down, you're already on that lip. If you jump at the right time, for whatever reason, your car will end up with the nose facing the sky and it'll be in a perfect prone position to wave dash down and get a speed boost. Once again, wave dashes are higher priority. And so curve dashes only come after, but curve dashes do also look sick and they have some use case. Mainly from what I found, vertical movement in Rocket League generally tends to be more hasty than horizontal movement. When you're rotating, you're not so worried about rotating left and right, but you are worried about rotating up and down the field. Main use case for this is if you're moving off your back wall or your opponent's back wall and you need to get up or down field. So the situation is, you know, you're coming down the wall, you're near the lip. If you time your jump at the right time, it's literally just a click of the jump button your nose will fly up into the air and you can wave dash down and recover fast. I actually made a curve dash tutorial back when I was like 19 or 18. I don't know why, but I was feeling smart that day. I tried to be like super technical and analytical and science, big, big physics and science words in it. So if you want to hear me at 19 years old or 18 years old, try to sound smart while like squeaking into the mic. 
Just go click that, watch it at 1.5 speed, and just try to ignore me being incredibly annoying. Just good luck. Curve dash video there. Ah, uh, yes, two left. Number eight, wall jumps slash Mario jumps slash Spider-Man drill. I don't know what to call this recovery move, but it's basically when situation is ball is up in the air, right? It's in front of your net. You're on defense. You jump up, you save the ball just with a soft touch. So it's still floating in your air. Then you recover onto your back wall and you use a nearby wall to then reset your jump timer and dodge back into the ball and clear it and hit it with power or whatever you want to do. That might sound super situational and it might not sound useful, but in pro player, just high level play even, this is actually a useful mechanic once you get to a high enough rank because goal line defense at the high levels is make or break for winning some games. Now, the best way to learn this, like level one or level zero maybe, is just going into free play and practice jumping from your back wall to the ceiling, to the side wall, back down to the back wall, to the ground, and so on and so forth. That will teach you how to do like these kind of Mario jumps side to side, these Spider-Man jumps around the pitch. But if you're super serious and you want to really get good at this, what you should do is you should download the workshop map called Hornet's Nest by a guy called DMC. Now you may have seen me do this in like a YouTube short or something like that. But what this is, is a super shrunk down cage where you can practice spider manning or you know wall jumping from side to side with high repetition so put in caveman words if you do hornet's nest you get good fast uh and lastly number nine neutral jumps neutral jumps are last on this list but definitely not least they're more important than five six seven and eight on this list and the only reason i put them at the end of this list is because i didn't remember them until the end of the list but now you're watching the video at the end hopefully because this is more important than anything else if i had to put it in perspective to you i would say like the benefits i've gotten in rank from wall dash, curve dash, wall jumps, or Mario jumps, or whatever you want to call them, and maybe even like flip cancels or stuff like that. I would say the combined speed boost that I get from doing all those different things in game almost equal neutral jumps. Like they're almost as good as neutral jumps. So if you just learn this one thing, you'll be better off than if you learned like any of the shit I've been rambling about this video. The reason neutral jumps are so good, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a neutral jump is just when you click your jump button, but with an empty direction input. So you're not pushing your joystick anywhere. You do your first jump, right? Let's say you turn your car in whatever direction you want and you just, you jump again. It's just the double jump. But the reason it's special, the reason I call it a neutral jump is because most players just use it for like a fast aerial. They just use it to go boop, boop and get higher in the air quicker. But what people don't realize is you could go boop, on your first jump, get yourself higher in the air, right? And then air roll to the right and the neutral jump, boop. And now you're over here in this 3D space that I am terribly envisioning and you can change direction. So imagine like head on view, right? Average beta male goes boop, boop. And then they try to turn this way and then they fly that way. Sigma male that watches Spook Luke videos, jump, air roll while jumping, neutral jump, boop, and you're here. You ever heard of a hypotenuse, right? Instead of going boom, 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 instead you're boom, whoop, straight to the end point. And that's just math, right? And you can't argue with facts and logic. So for that reason, neutral jumps are sick. You should go into free play right now and you should practice just jumping off the wall and air rolling one way. So that way your hood is facing to the ground and then neutral jumping to ground yourself quicker. And so that's the video. This is where I should conclude with something that will leave a lasting impression on you. Instead, I'm gonna use this precious time we have together and I'm gonna ask you to follow my personal Instagram. No, we're not talking about my Rocket League Instagram where I post tips and tutorials and helpful stuff like that. No, instead, we are talking about my personal Instagram you know, where I post pictures of nice looking coffee shops I go to uh, and dogs I see on the street. But we're talking about that Instagram. You should go follow my personal Instagram. More importantly, the main reason you need to follow my personal Instagram right now is actually because my ex-girlfriend currently has more followers than me. 
I know. And uh, I am vain and I really want to show her up. So if you could just scroll down, description, really quick, boom, Instagram, hit, follow, bang, it would be a win-win, honestly. First off, I don't want to act like this is just me asking for things, right? This is a win for you because if you follow me, right, you'll see when I post memes and I post pretty cool memes. But more importantly, number two, it'll be a win for me because then when you and hopefully maybe some of your friends follow me on Instagram and also my ex unblocks me one day, I can finally say to my ex, who has more high school boys following them now? That's right. Folks, you heard it here first. Get Luke to 2,000 Instagram followers, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, I went off the rails with this one, Buck. Nailed it, though, right? Buck the video guy, I got a question. Do you think she's going to unblock me one day? You think it was the flamingo shorts? Oh, look at these quads, though. Wait. Yeah. See this, Buck? Holy. Is this safe for work? What do you say? What do you say, Buck? Oh, we're still live. Oh, shit. Okay, wait a minute.